no Tom and him and extra. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to call the meeting of the Common Council to order. I will ask the clerk to take a roll call. Elder Person Ranke. Here. Rote. Here. Stefanski. Here. Tenorio. He is excused. Vitale. Here. Weigel. Here. Grisham. Here. Haas. Here. Keen. Here. Lysak. Here. Nine present, one excused. We have a quorum. Please rise if you are able and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led this evening by Elder Person Ranke. Okay, we will move on to item D, public hearings on tonight's agenda. We have one item. I will ask the clerk to read out item one. Resolution relative to the determination for a special use permit for the DECO, a proposed event space to be located at 7140 West Greenfield Avenue. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Thanks, Mayor. Um, this is the, uh, well, once upon a time, it was a, a J.C. Penney department store and then uh, later in the 80s, it became the Wedding Center. And then uh, had a short run as an antique store. Uh, the owner, uh, Walter Holtz, uh, ran an antique store out of here for about a year or so. And, and now he's got a change of plans. He wants to uh, create an event space um, for, for this building at 71st and uh, Greenfield Avenue. Um, the building is roughly about 20,000 square feet. It's located in our downtown. The district, the zoning district is a C1 uh, downtown central business district. Uh, the proposed event uh, or space is going to be used for an event space for upscale wedding venue businesses, um, corporate events, parties, um, all within this building. Uh, the, again, the property is uh, considered a special use or conditional use under our new code, uh, given the fact that it's a, a, an assembly of uh, over 5,000 square feet of space. The hours of operation are generally speaking are going to be between 5 p.m. and 11.30 p.m. Uh, they will have uh, smaller functions during the week as well, which could be open, I guess, earlier in the day, depending on the event or the client. Uh, you could have luncheons and so on. But um, so the, the, the special use resolution has, uh, has been written to reflect uh, some flexibility in terms of the hours of operation. Uh, the bulk of work, there's actually work being uh, done under permit right now with the building. There was some uh, uh, testing being done in the exterior of the building. If you recall, the, the exterior of the building um, had a, um, an aggregate um, siding over the top, which covered uh, the original uh, J.C. Penney storefront from years ago. Um, uncovering that aggregate stone on the exterior of the building, uh, it revealed uh, you know, the larger window openings that you see on the right-hand image of the picture there. We'll get into the architectural in a little bit more. <coughs> but the completion date um, for the building is later this, uh, later this year in the fall. Uh, some of the exterior improvements that um, are, um, are, are going to be Going, going forward with this are, are new exterior facade treatments, uh, the large format windows, uh, some new porcelain tiles. Uh, they've had to scrape off all that aggregate siding from the front of the building. And the plan is to, if they, if they can't restore the brick that's uh, under, uh, underneath that aggregate, that they'll be uh, putting a, uh, a porcelain tile siding over the top of that. Uh, the canopy is going to be freshened up with a new stainless steel finish, signage, uh, new windows within the building eyebrow features over the second floor windows, and then uh, accessibility improvements as well, uh, both within the building and, and so on. Um, on the interior, uh, the bulk of uh, the work really is going to be just uh, renovating the, the space for the different floors within the building, and then just upgrading the finishes to uh, suit the use. This is a real um, Again, overview of the uh, floor plans. Start on the far left hand side of your screen there is the, uh, the basement. And that's uh, being converted for a lounge area. You have a men's and a, and a ladies lounge area for, you know, in, in the case of a wedding, for example, uh, prep area for the bride uh, and, and her team and the groom and, and the groomsmen. Um, and then, uh, you know, pool tables, some different amenities downstairs to be, you know, sort of relaxed and get comfortable before the big event. And then upstairs, moving on to the next image to your right, is the, uh, the actual reception area with a dance hall, uh, DJ areas, the different uh, one, one possible table setting within the building, a lounge area. And then moving up to the third uh, <coughs> floor, or actually the second floor plan, 
it's actually a, a, a balcony area for, um, again, sort of overflow. The, the wedding uh, reception uh, or party can take place partially on that balcony, and it's going to be an open uh, view to the uh, first floor down below. There'll be a grand staircase leading up to that balcony. All four or, or the floors here will be serviced by an elevator as well. Uh, and then the third floor on the far right is uh, the, uh, the ceremony area. The seating that's shown there is roughly about 154 people in that in that pot, in that arrangement there. So, in terms of um, you know events and the varying sizes of events, um, there's going to be a need for for parking, of course. But there's uh, there's about 385 parking stalls in, in downtown West Dallas. It's the municipal parking areas in the in the uh, in the city, uh, paralleling Greenfield Avenue behind the building storefronts, and then. In addition to that, there's another 161 or so on-street parking stalls within the commercial frontages of, of Greenfield Avenue and uh, the, the commercial side streets. Uh, but driving to and um, parking and then going to an event is one way to get there. Uh, but there's also other alternatives. Ride share, um, like Uber, Lyft, and so on is, is a very popular way to, uh, to go to an event and uh, attend it. Uh, there's also going to be shuttles that could be arranged with the nearby hotels. We have a hotel um, that's um, underway, nearing, uh, actually not nearing completion yet, but uh, under construction on 70th and uh, roughly Washington Street, the home to suites, and then a hotel on 84th and uh, Greenfield Avenue, the Hampton Inn and Suites. So this location is in between those two uh, bookends of hotels. So uh, rides can be arranged from a hotel for guests staying at those places to this so it's a very convenient location. The, um, uh, the applicant uh, has indicated that he's been also monitoring the, uh, the gauge event space on 70th Street and noticing that while people do drive to that event space and park in nearby surface parking lots, they also park in, um, uh, along the street fringes of 70th Street and, and Washington Street. And the, the street parking is actually probably a little bit more popular in that situation. Uh, because you have to walk a little bit of a distance to the, uh, the surface parking. But in, a, in any event, um, driving from one's home to, to an event is, isn't the preferred, always the preferred means of getting there. So there are other alternates of, of getting to an event, and that's just one of the things I wanted to iterate with this slide. So the Plan Commission has recommended approval on uh, April 27th. Uh, in this Hearing has been uh, noticed as a class two notice, and properties within 200 feet have been notified, and we have received no objections to date. I'm happy to entertain any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Are there any questions from the members of the council? Mr. Mayor. Alderman Weigel. Um, Steve, I think uh, this proposal looks very familiar to most members of this council. We had a very similar proposal a couple of years ago presented to us, and if I recall, we wholeheartedly supported it. Uh, very similar use, it was a different uh, applicant because they weren't able to secure ownership of the, of the building. Um, and if I remember also, the businesses of the downtown were very supportive of it also. I don't see anybody from the bid here, but as one of the aldermen of the district, a business owner, property owner, and resident of the downtown, I, I, I can really see the value in this. Um, I'm not worried about the parking. You know, I, I know that some people may be, but uh, I assume the applicant is aware of where we are, are on the different licenses that he'll need, that they'll need, correct? As far correct. as Correct, right. And then I guess the one question I have from this, this seems a little bit different from the previous application. Was that two years ago? Was that pre-COVID? Uh, about yeah, 2017-ish. Oh, yeah. longer than that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but that basement lounge thing so this is this is not going to be open as like a regular bar this is only going to be for special events correct i see head nods i see wally in the in the audience there so yeah i guess that was my question and that was just a little, i wanted to refresh everybody that the a very similar use had been proposed here in the past and at the time it if, if I recall, it was unanimous support from the council. Obviously, I can't speak for everyone, and there was different members here then, too, I believe. Yeah. But uh, I think it's a great idea. So thank you. Thanks, Alderman Weigel. Any other questions from the council? Mayor Design. Alderperson Reinke. Uh, this particular property has been used for many wedding venues, we'll put it that way. Some of them didn't 
really come to fruition, um, or else they weren't in business very long, it seemed. Um, is there a date set for the remodeling, finishing, and opening for this business? Yes, uh, it'll be um, later this um, later this year in the fall of this year is the expected opening date. Now, some of the some of the issues to date have been just um, supply chain issues, um, ordering windows, and then having delays. You know, the wrong color windows delivered to the to the property, so they have to order the right and. It, so it's just it's there are those types of construction delays, but the right. anticipated opening is later this uh, later see. this year in the fall. Because it's uh, <coughs> yeah. a fairly large amount of remodeling that they'll have to go through. Correct. <coughs> yes. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? Okay. Seeing none. Are there any comments or questions? from the members of the audience on our public hearing. All right, seeing none, we will close our public hearing and that concludes item D on the agenda. We will move right to item E, which is citizen participation. This is the opportunity for the council to receive information from members of the public during this 30 minute period. Speakers must approach the podium, give us your name and address for our official record and please Make your comments um, one statement, no more than five minutes. Is there anybody that wishes to address the council under citizen participation this evening? All right, then we will close citizen participation. Item F on your agendas announces our uh, standing committees which will be meeting during recess. Those room numbers are listed on the bottom of page one on your agendas. Going to page two, the next item is the mayor's report. I just have a few things this evening. Um, every year there is a week designated for some of our employees. We have um, library week, public health week, and this week we have somehow three of them all lumped into one. So not only is this week um, EMS week, but it is also national police week and it is also Public Works Week. And I don't ever recall when those three have all fallen on the same week, but I just wanna take a minute to um, recognize the excellent work that all of those departments do. I don't wanna go on too long about each and every one of them, but um, our, they're all there when we need them any hour of any day. And police and fire are literally covering our city every minute of every day. And public works, ge you know, generally is a first shift operation, but when there are water main breaks in the middle of the night, uh, they're there. When there are trees hit in the middle of the night, they're there. So I just wanna take a minute to recognize and acknowledge and thank the men and women of the West Dallas Fire Department, the West Dallas Police Department, and also the West Dallas Department of Public Works for the excellent work that they do. Um, next up, spinning off of that, I just want to recognize Dave Webking and his staff once again for the amazing job that they did at the DPW open house and job fair on Saturday morning. It was a really nice day and they had equipment on display, they had demonstrations, they had staff out explaining what they do. It was great to see them beaming with pride on the work that they do and the little kids just loving seeing all the trucks and the dump trucks and the snow plows and, and the lights turning on and off and the electrical division and it just there was so much going on. It was such a well done event and I just wanna thank them for putting that together. And similar to that, um, I wanna thank all the residents that came out for the citywide cleanup on Saturday morning. Uh, there were probably well over 100 people that went out to the various neighborhoods and were picking up all the treasures that the snow melt left us. So I'm um, very appreciative of the Community Services Bureau from the police department spearheading that and um, everybody who came out to help clean up around our parks and our sidewalks, pick up some of the litter. Uh, that does conclude the mayor's report this evening. We will move to item H. Um, do we have any reports from the alder persons? Mayor Devine. Alder person Reinke. We've had a lot of doom and gloom too, along with uh, the positives in West Dallas that are happening, along with the doom and gloom, the bucks lost, and all uh, 21 people were 
shot and we hear about the, the, sh the shooting all over the country, but something really happy happened to me. And normally I don't announce things of this nature, but I thought I'm gonna share this with you because I, it made me very pleased and happy. I um, needed groceries and I stopped at the pick and save on Highway 100. And there was a lot of commotion going on. I didn't know what for, but um, I didn't find out what the commotion was about until I was ready to check out. And in the checkout line, uh, my groceries were being bagged by Yelich. <laughs> 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 and, I, and I was thrilled. I was really thrilled. You can't, <laughs> can't, um, I can't tell you enough how happy I was to have Mr. Yelich bagging my groceries. <laughs> On top of that, there was another exciting thing that happened to me, and the clerk that collects the money said that I didn't have to pay. The wow. groceries were paid by the organization, and that is the first. I, so I was, like I said, I was very, very pleased, but on the way out, they handed me this little card, and they said to help spread the message of kindness because of all the happenings in our, in our community, surrounding communities, they wanted to brighten the day of the people that were in that particular store, and so I was one of the lucky ones uh, that was served by a brewer, and I'm a brewer fan, <laughs> and also that my groceries were all paid for. <laughs> What's the chance of that? <laughs> so anyway, I thought I'd share something positive that's happening in our community. Very nice, thank you. <laughs> Who wants to follow that? Uh, I'm all right. <laughs> said that she must have some connections uh, for, for her to be treated that way, you know, really. I think we're going to be scrutinizing, <coughs> scrutinizing her ethics statement next time, too. <laughs> Mayor Devine, I just have one question. Uh, Alder Person Grisham. Uh, to Alder Woman Ranky, did he sign your, sign your grocery bag? Did you do paper <laughs> or plastic? <laughs> Any other Alder Person's reports? Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. I move for approval of the minutes of May 3rd, 2022. Second. Sorry, did you finish? Yes, <laughs> second. Okay, there's a second. <laughs> Motion and a second. Um, any changes to the minutes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All, any opposed? Minutes are approved. Item J. Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. If there's no objection from any member of the council, I would move that the consent agenda be approved as submitted. So moved. Second. second. There's a motion and a second. <laughs> um, any discussion? Hearing none, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Elder Person Reinke. Aye. Rote. Aye. Stefanski. Aye. Vitale. Aye. Weigel. Aye. Grisham. Aye. Haas. Aye. Keen. Aye. Lysak. Aye. Nine in favor, <laughs> one excused. Motion carries. Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. I move that we stand in recess until conclusion of the committee meeting. Second. second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are in recess. I would have filled two cards. <laughs>
kind of last minute, get it in um, August, September, I believe, and then this year we're gonna have more time. Yeah. I only have one complaint. I didn't name any of the authors. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, I had a bag. Uh, are you still doing the collection, or should I just take that? I have a. Which one is it? The one yes. that's separate? Yeah. Tax key number 474-0004-001. Move for approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 21. Resolution 2022-0356. Resolution to approve the bid of Pro Electric Incorporated for street lighting conversion in the city of West Dallas in the amount of one million one hundred four thousand dollars and sixty six six hundred sixty seven. <laughs> Move to approve. Yeah. <laughs> second. Doesn't sound like that much when you say it, but <laughs> right. Uh, we moved in second. Any discussion? No. That's okay. fine. Just move, move, second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Item 22, resolution to approve bid of Green Bay Pipe and TV LLC for closed circuit TV inspection of sanitary and storm sewer, sewers in the city of West Dallas in the amount of $74,555. Move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. I, I have a discussion item for you two gentlemen. Um, we're just doing this because our truck didn't come in, right? Right. It's going to be another year. Is that what? Yeah. So the manufacturer of the, the chassis. It's almost a year behind okay. due to the supply chain issues that's coming through. So. And that was budgeted, the truck was budgeted, right? Correct. So the money last, previous carry over year. to the next yep. year? Yep. yep. Okay. And how about the money for the Green Bay, the 74 grand? Where we, we budgeted it. You budgeted it. Yep. Is that part of the truck money or? No. No, separate. separate. Yep. Okay. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion? Carries. Then we go to item 23, resolution to approve bid of Wolf Paving for street construction in 91st Street, West Hayes Avenue, West Orchard Street, and West Vigo Terrace in the city of West Dallas in the amount of $550,129.75. Move to approve. It's been Long. <laughs> I got you ahead of time. Eh? Thank well, you for the correction. <laughs> so that wasn't that sweet. Right? Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Move to aye. Aye. Oh, move to approve. I'm doing it again. Motion carries. <laughs> move to adjourn. 
Well, no, we there's one more. Maybe we, <laughs> <laughs> we go at item 24, and then, then you can do We, we always day. keep it <laughs> keep it lively. All day. I know. Um, <laughs> item 24 is a discussion <laughs> item uh, regarding structural deficit work group options and ideas to mitigate the persistent structural deficit of departments whose liaison responsibilities are with the Public Works Committee. And I'll turn it over to Dave and uh, possibly and whoever else wants to talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are requesting that this item be held at this time. We'd okay. Like to give the department the opportunity to put together information for the committee to consider at future meetings. Move to hold. Second. Okay. Any discussion? I guess the one thing, because we can discuss it's on the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, this surprised me, this one, Dave. Only fix street lights outages during work hours. I, I didn't know that we did them in off hours. I really didn't, unless there was yeah, some so huge, major, half the city blackout. Right, so uh, the normal working hours, 7 to 3 right. uh, p.m. So then we uh, designate a person on watch uh, for the electrical division. And from time to time, we do receive calls through um, the non-emergency number or police dispatch <coughs> of any type of occurrence of light outages. Could be alley lights, could be one street light, or it could be more major, uh, a whole circuit. So right. that's based on single phase or the um, parallel circuit. And once you have a fault within that series circuit, it takes the whole circuit out. So those we like to uh, continue once we're notified, but usually by the police department. We usually have the electrician on watch. They go to the substation, pull the strap, and they'll try to troubleshoot uh, briefly to see if they can but maintain is, the lighting. It is pretty dangerous, too. I mean, I, one job I was inspecting in the 90s, a wire got snagged. It actually caught us a fire. So okay. you want to you wanna fix something like that yeah. before. Yeah. All right. I just <clears> that popped up That's on a good my point. Yeah. Okay, uh, there was a motion to adjourn, I believe, or do you want to do it again? No. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, okay. Tracy, do that. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, we are adjourned. At this time, the license and health uh, committee meeting, uh, all the uh, members are present. So we begin with item 27. Zero twenty twenty two zero zero eight zero ordinance establishing a trap neuter release program for federal cats amending section seven point one two and seven point two two. I believe uh, it's sponsored by uh, older person Christian and Keen. So maybe you can enlighten us, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may ask this item to be held for, or if we can just skip forward. Okay. Alderwoman Keene would like to be present, oh, and I, I believe okay. that oh, yes. uh, their meeting should wrap up relatively right. fast. Yeah, so if we can just move along, if it's sure. too delayed, I thank the presenter yeah, for being here. We can move However, to the if we can move one. along, that would sure, be great. we can move the next one. So we have 28, 2022-0462, Class B uh, Tavern Seasonal Temporary Permits Extension and the temporary public entertainment premise permits request for Rivera of Wisconsin DBA Rivera Lane, eight six zero zero West Greenfield Avenue, from May first, twenty twenty two to November first, twenty twenty two. TMP twenty two four. So, is the gentleman uh, here uh, from Rivera? Yes. Would you like to come forward? Sure. May, yes, sit down. Okay. How long do you have that bar? That family has owned it for 22 years. 22 years, a long time. So, so at this point, do you uh, like to uh, expand doing something more than uh, you yeah. have done? Yeah, uh, we just want to use the space outside to, you know, for music. So for people music. gather out there and so they can have, you know, beverages out there too. So you know the time of the music and it's a seeds of the music? Yeah, I think 10 o'clock is the cutoff, the, what the permit says. Okay. Any members have any questions? Mr. Chair, have you submitted a plan at all? Uh, I did. Normally, don't we expect uh, these bars? It's in here. Bar? It's in here. Do you have a copy of that in your packet? Yeah, it's in here. Oh, no, I didn't get it. 
Yeah. I just lost it. I was looking at it, and I just okay. lost it. So I'm going back to it. Go ahead, Alderman Roth. Yeah, I, all I got was a floor plan. I didn't get an outdoor yeah. plan. That's what we have. Yeah, that's what I have. Uh, yeah, I guess the outdoor floor plan, I guess, was just kind of a sketch. Um, the previous plan that we did was put in the door outside. There's an automatic mm -hmm. sliding door. Um, so we wanted to use that to go outside to have music. Because you, you have to have the area fenced off so people aren't wandering yeah. in and out. And when I first read your application, it yep. sounded like it was going to be a kind of like a church fest atmosphere. and. That's hey, by the, the way, if you guys want to go bowling, there's the, the building. Inside. It just sounded, there wasn't there's nothing for a sense side. of order. Like I said, we don't have a, an outside plan. Yeah, I was going to do... Unless they'd be down there now. Um, no, I was just going to use no, some planters to put around a kind of barricade. Oh, I don't say barricade, but, you know, to keep people in a, in a designated so, area to enjoy building. that space. But I, I'm not sure, but I think Greenfield you might Avenue. need more. I'm, yeah, not, I'm not sure yeah, on that one. We would probably need you to write to make... It actually, yeah, there's yeah, no fence. Right. So, so this is here the movable stage. So that's inside. Yeah, I submitted though. some stuff to Gina, so I don't know. Okay. Well, then it comes around the back here. Mr. Yeah. Chair. Yes. Um, would you mind going over some of that since we don't have uh, maybe that sketch? So, what area of the property are you looking to ex have the extension? Um, yeah, I got started to. So I'm looking at your front door, which is Kitty Corner on Greenfield. Yeah. This is it? So, like, that's for the, yeah. Sorry. You want to pass that down? No, turn it the other way. Otherwise, it's going to flip on you. There you go. Okay, it didn't flip, but it's okay. Um, so Greenfield Avenue, we have 87th existing building to remain. Well, it's not our building. I just so. Okay, so here we have Greenfield Avenue. So where exactly am I seeing? You've got the bar and lounge kitchen on this side. So where exactly is where it going to be? the stage it says right there. Oh, okay. So is there a parking lot area in that area? Yeah, that's all okay. the parking lot area right there. All right. So do you plan on, uh, I don't know how safe just planters would be if you have a parking lot. Um, Isn't that what they have on Greenfield Avenue down like in the bid district? I think there's a curb line that obviously they're not in the street. Well, I thought at one time they were in the other. No, and that those were parklets. So, okay. and those were on the sidewalk area actually. And if they were, they were actually um, had railings on them. So that would be one of my concerns. Uh, how many days a week are you looking to have music? Just on the weekend, okay. like Saturday, Sunday. Afternoon. Live bands, amplified. Yeah. Okay. Well, live bands. I don't know, but like, I don't know how amplified. I mean, not. Okay. Do you have a set schedule of how many times a month you're planning? You said weekend, so every weekend. Well, I'd like to, but I haven't scheduled anything yet because I haven't been approved for anything. Which would make sense. So, so thank you. Put me a year behind because everyone's going to be scheduled this summer. Okay. Well, what's the consensus of the uh, members at this well, time? But. With that open parking lot, don't they need a fence like kind of like what Paulie's has at his yeah. place? You need to have it around something to designate what area you're going to have the alcohol in. Fence. Okay. Yeah. Back to my back. And this is for oh, yeah, this, this is for 2022. So if you are looking for something for next year, this is not for there. next summer. This is for this summer. This summer. This summer. Yeah. So is that so, your intention to, to do it for next summer, or are you looking to get the approval now and try to get it into fall? Yeah, I'm trying to do it now. Okay. Like, like as far as like having a schedule or having it every weekend, I don't know if that'll be possible with being sold. Well, I think what we'd be looking at, what I would be looking at more is, okay, safety. You have to have that fenced off, and especially in the parking lot area. A uh, number of times a week, if you said weekends, we have other establishments that obviously are doing that almost every weekend themselves. Uh, there is a set standard of decibels. Um, have you reached out to any of the neighbors? How close are you in proximity to, you know, residential areas? Those are things that typically we would ask you, did you, did you do that uh, so that your neighbors are aware that this would take place? That way we don't have complaints coming in after the fact. Sure. Yeah, no, I mean, I haven't reached out to any of them. I was trying to get the planning done. Um, 
yeah, the neighbors are pretty far away from where that's going to be. That'll be on Greenfield Avenue. Uh, the closest neighbor is 1353 on 86th Street, so they're, I mean, hundreds of feet away. Right, and I'm your older woman as well as Dana Keene, so I'm familiar with your property. I've been in it, so these are just standard questions that we yeah, would typically sure. ask. Uh, yeah, I think as long as we would um, really wrap up what the details of that would look like, I wouldn't have a problem approving you. Yeah, I just didn't, I guess none of that came up in the process of doing this, so mm -hmm. I don't have any answers for that, I guess. Okay. Are you looking to have the bands just in the evening or all day or all afternoon? Just exactly like, what is your plan? Uh, just to have like one band like at night between like the 3 and 7 o'clock time, okay. like starting. So sometime, Because like, you've asked for the time 11 o'clock to yeah, I mean, I just fill out the application and put in the available hours that were on the sheet. So, I mean, I don't want to limit myself by I saying see. I'm only But most of your activities will yeah. take place at <clears throat> night. Yeah, right. or, or late afternoon. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to fulfill some of those concerns uh, in the next two or three weeks? Or, uh... Uh, yeah, I mean, I just don't know as far as, like, a fence and stuff like that. I mean, putting that up quickly, I don't think would be too much as long as it's, I don't you know, I have to look into the rules about the fencing and how close that can be to Greenfield, and if I can put a gate on it, you know, in front of the entrance, yes. and what that's going to, what the rules are with that. Yeah, okay. based on the Alderman Christian, what she is state, I think it makes sense, you know, really. Well, at this juncture, I don't know if anybody else has any questions. I think this is really kind of open. Um, I think you need to check with various departments. Rebecca, do you have anything that you can add, you know, that maybe Gina, or would we have building come in? How, how would that look? Is there just a standard protocol that he would look to follow? I mean, you have questions as far as fencing in the parking lot. That wouldn't be our purview. That would be building inspection. Well, what, what is before the committee, the application is what we would we collect at that time. If the committee is looking for us to collect more information from people, then we need to know that so we would add more right. things. So for what he submitted is what's required at this time Okay. for this all right. I can't speak to the fencing requirements or anything like that. So would we look at it, and I guess this is my question, would we look at if we would approve, as we would state, these specific stipulations, and once those are done, he's granted the license? Is that? Um, we, could, we could keep him like we have been doing on the agenda until those things are completed. Okay. If you wanted to do it that way. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess I was looking to get permission to have people have their beverages outside and then have a band. Um, of course, there's more details in that from what I'm hearing than simply being able to have the band and stuff. I mean, like you said, a lot of places, most establishments have bands and stuff outside. So I don't think that it'll be any different from any of those. Right. Mr. Chair. So, so you're considering not having a band if it comes on? Or still, you, you, you wish to have a band, right? Well, yeah, like, yeah, we'd like to have, like, have the music, music outside, right? have some yeah. sort of atmosphere outside for people to go. Um, our business isn't typically open in the summer, um, so for us, you know, we'd have stuff going on, and that would be a less vacant-looking building on Greenfield Avenue mm -hmm. for five months, you know. Yeah, we can, uh, like uh, Rebecca state that we can just uh, probably keep adding on the agenda, you know. Rebecca has a question, too. Yeah, go ahead. I was, I was also going to say, alternatively, there... There is a more of a temporary extension where people could get it for one or two days at a time instead of for the whole season. Yeah. So if you were having special events like one or two times a month, you could apply for that if the committee is not comfortable with a long-term commitment. But I don't think then he would be putting necessarily up a whole fence, probably more right. like blocking off the area. Yeah. But that's another option for the committee to consider if you're looking to see a test of what the neighbors might be impacted or how they might be impacted. That Mr. would make Chair. sense to do. I think it makes Mr. sense. Chair. Yes. Are you planning on just doing this Saturdays and Sundays? Yeah. Just not not at all during the week, right? No. And noise ordinance ends on the weekends on Saturday at 11 or 10? I believe 10 o'clock is for the ordinance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, as a committee, you could recommend approval with it just being approved on Friday and Saturdays for a certain time period if you say it's three to seven or whatever you can 
make those connections. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, for me, Saturday and Sunday would be the days okay. I'd be looking for. Just to, mm -hmm. we're going to limit it, that those would be the days that I'm looking to, to really have something. So no Friday. The, uh, not at consensus no of the members. Not at this time. No. Okay. So, Mr. Chair. Yes. So you're talking every weekend. Well, like I don't have anything planned every weekend, right. but, but like that's that's your attempt is every weekend. Uh, yeah, I guess. Because most of the people that come in here say we're going to do July Fourth weekend, we're going to do Labor Day weekend, and we're going to do whatever weekend. That's sure. Kind of what we see. We can we can work with if you have some specific dates. And where are we at on the fencing? Well, that would be very important because people wander in and out and minors and checking IDs and things like that. Um, that would be my... Yeah, I mean, for right now, like, all the alcohol would be served inside in the bar, just them being able to be out there to enjoy the van and have their beverages. Um, if that's something that needs to be fenced up, like, I don't think, I mean, it wouldn't be too hard to put a fence up. It's right. just we've, we've required that of everybody because here you are. I bought my drink in the building, and here comes the 17-year-old kid and there's no fence, and here you go. Don't tell your parents. It's it's, or reaching over the fence. It's Paulie's has it pretty good with the snow fence and everything. Right? Just temporary plastic snow fence, orange snow fence. Yeah, I mean, I could put that up. Yeah, uh, we'd. I mean, I'd like to see that. I don't speak yeah. for the other four. No, I think that would be standard. Would yeah. that'd be that'd be fine. Right, sure. but it's not stated as as standard. Yet. Right, yeah. right. But based on our approvals, that's how we typically would have that. So. Um, so what's what's the uh, consensus of the uh, members? Well, I would make a motion to approve with the extension use for Saturdays and Sundays as requested. And I think, well, you said three to seven. I think that's a reasonable time for a Sunday. Would it be beneficial for you to have it like uh, as late as 9 p.m. for Saturday evening? You, uh, you have that flexibility. Or is uh, yeah, I just my plan I guess on Saturdays would have bands around seven o'clock to play, and then Sundays to have them play around three. So okay, so seven in the evening is the start time, is what you would yeah, like. Yeah, on Saturdays. Yeah. Okay. And then ending by ten. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, and and that's another thing is is and and Alderman Stefanski can speak probably to this a little bit better than I can, uh, because of your familiarity with Polly's. There are decibel readers on your phone and or your bands typically would be able to do that. We set the standard of the decibel to be I'm not in excess less. of 100. 100, 100. Yeah. So that would be also a stipulation yeah. in the extension of use. So we have Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, this would be from Memorial Day until what is your requested dates? Um, November. Right? Yeah, I mean, I had, I mean, yeah, the application was sometime yeah. in November. I would back that up and approve only through Labor Day. That's fine, yeah. So that would be your seasonal extension of use. If you want events after that, you're welcome to come back for specific ones. Some people do Harvest Fest, for example, but I'm not inclined to, to give carte blanche all the way through November. Um, yeah, that's fine. So that would be my recommendation if that would be acceptable by you. Also stipulate that that has to be a fenced-in designated area. Okay. Um, is there anything anybody else would like to add to that? And by the way, when he said 100, 100, it's 100 decibels at 100 feet. Oh, okay. Right. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So. Very good elements. So that is my motion. I'll second. So all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Oppose? The aye have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Okay, now we move forward. Uh, Sorry, that was so confusing. <laughs> Rebecca. <laughs> we confused Rebecca. Well. We get confused. <laughs> <laughs> so we move forward uh, with item 29, 2022-0579. New Class B Tavern License and Public Entertainment Premises Permit for National... Uh, Avenue on 92nd Street, Incorporated, DBA, Airy Flash, 9140 West National Avenue, West Dallas, Wisconsin, 53219. Agent John Roots, public entertainment permits to uh, include jukebox, disc jockey, pool table, amusement machines, theater, movies, band, 
karaoke and the patrons dancing, instrumental music, and theatrical performances at the LC2249. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hi. Well, it's okay. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> I don't think so, you left anything so out. So you guys are, in, I mean, I, I use the term inclining to uh, do all this, eh? Well, I mean, in, in all honesty, we, I own Natty Oaks. Brian is my general manager, and him and I are partnering into taking uh, Butch's Steakhouse and continue on with what Butch and Stevens have always had as a traditional steakhouse in that, that location. These are just things that, hey, what if? If, know, if, right? Yeah, and, and we're not intending to have um, blocking out parking lots and all of that. We have a good establishment at Natty Oaks. Um, we just want to have a blue-collar steak joint like it's always been here in West Dallas, as far back as Stevens, and that's our objective. Um, and uh, we've got our blessing from Butch, which means a lot to me as someone who's been in this industry for a few years to compare to a man who's been in it since he was 14. So... Um, all of these little things, in all honesty, I don't think there's even enough space for a pool table in that building. <laughs> that's so. what I said. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of boxes and know, you know, you guys are, are, are we going to have rooftop pool? He's got so much space. I mean, oh no, 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 no. But uh, yes. So in all honesty, um, we want to continue on with the quality that has been there from um, from day one when it was Stevens. Uh, and then and carry on with what Brian and I have designed at Natty Oaks, which is a very high quality, uh, hopefully well-recognized establishment within the city. So, Good, thank you. Any question from the committee member? What is the name of has, your bar? And he has Santa at Natty Oaks. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> that is no kids are watching the video. Uh, <laughs> Henry Flock is the name of the restaurant. Brian's wife's maiden name is Henry. <laughs> My wife's maiden name is Flock. So it became Henry Flock's oh, yeah, to recognize that we're always nice. at work. That's and nice. Could yeah. we be at least with our wife some way? So there we go. That is how we came well, up with it. Because it wasn't indicated what the it name It should was. be under, um, isn't it? Yeah, DBA, Henry Flock's. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought that was the name of the person. <laughs> <laughs> we had to come up with a person. To save our marriages. Very different. Very different. <laughs> it's kind of okay, like Harry Potter. You yeah, know, kind of. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. We need a motion. I make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Thank you. The motion has been approved. welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the. That's right, sure, Mr. Thank you. I'm in hers and yours. Yep. <laughs> Take care. care. Double blessings. <laughs> so now I, I want to uh, go back to item 27. Because all the person keen, I believe she's here. Want to come join us? So I'd like to go over again. 02022-0080, ordinance establishing trap neuter release program for fe federal cats amending section 7.12 and 7.122. So I, uh, I like to have some uh, questions or response from Alderman, <laughs> Alderman Personal Christian or Keen. Actually, uh, Alderman Vitale, we have a presenter oh, you do? Uh, okay, that good. is going to go over the TNR program. Uh, I'd be glad to answer any other questions, but. Her vast knowledge, I think, well, will she's cover the pro. everything. She's the pro. She's the pro. Oh. Um, I will <laughs> just note to the committee that this was brought to me by several constituents in District 3. And I conferred with Alderwoman Keene on it, and then I reached out to Maddock, and that's how we became connected so I could learn more about the program. And I'll leave it at that so you can learn more about it. Okay, so... Trap, neuter, and it's either return or release, depending who you talk to, has been around. Oh, sorry. Yeah, hi. I'm Karen Sparapani. I'm the director at MADAC. I've been there for nine years. I was at Elmbrook Humane Society prior to that. I've been in animal rescue a very long time. You can't see. I just got my grays colored. Um, but, well, I should dye my hair before, too, you know. <laughs> I'll get there someday, but not quite yet. Um, so this is a, again, cats are put outside all the time. A lot of them are owned cats that people let go in, indoor, outdoor. Um, once a cat goes outside, it's never gonna just stay inside. It likes to go in and out. 
Then there's other people, um, or cats, I guess, that are abandoned outside, and they may not be spayed and neutered, they reproduce. There's many kind-hearted people that want to feed them, and once they have resources, like any other animal, they start reproducing. The more food you put out, the more cats are born, and that's where you get, you know, issues with your municipalities and your residents, where someone might be feeding a large number of cats, um, not being con too concerned about their their ability to breed, and uh, that's where trap neuter release came. Because the the prior solution is catch and kill. Catch and kill does not end cats being outside, and honestly, neither is trap neuter release. Of the good thing about trap neuter release, though, is that it prevents the cats from breeding. And the breeding is what causes the behaviors that people get annoyed with, the howling, the uh, spraying outside. Um, those behaviors diminish completely once an animal's been fixed. Um, again, nobody's, you know, I don't think anybody's here to say just have you know, free for all, everyone just spay neuter your cats and throw them outside. But any cat that we have outside that's being cared for, you know, by somebody, it's, uh, it's important to the community that they have a humane option. You know, people all the time bring in cats to Maddox, oh, I trapped this feral cat, what's gonna happen to it? It's gonna get euthanized because we can't adopt them out. Um, and people feel genuinely bad. Well, I was feeding it all summer. Isn't there another option? And no, not right now, there's not. And uh, this would allow people, the way that uh, I understand the ordinance would be changed is that people would be able to have one cat on their property that they'd be responsible for. It would be sterilized, so it would not be able to breed, which is, important, very critical to this, the success of this working. Um, but also, it's not going to encourage people to have colonies. And colonies is what, ha City of Milwaukee did a pilot program where they had people <coughs> running colonies, and they let that sunset because it was just a very bad situation. People just kept adding cats in. Some people be like, oh, cat house, just throw your cat there. That's not spayed or neutered. So this, I believe, is a way better premise to set it up this way, that it would allow people to have that opportunity. And I will have to talk on behalf of my staff who don't like to euthanize cats that are not friendly, but they're certainly healthy. And it's, you know, it's hard to wake up in the morning and come to work knowing you're going to have to, it's essentially like euthanizing a rabbit or a raccoon. You know, these animals didn't ask for any of this. And for people that really care about animals, it's hard to justify. So I think that's kind of the balance that people find, that if we can prevent the problem behaviors for understanding cats are going to be outside and really educating the public that if they're going to have indoor-outdoor cats, they should be sterilized. Um, and then, you know, minding this program. The also good thing about this program, it doesn't cost anybody any money, which is, you know, unfunded mandates. We don't like those ever. Um, and uh, there's options for people that would like to have their cat, uh, a feral cat that they've been feeding, spayed or neutered. If that cat gives birth prior, we have all kinds of, e either Manic has a foster program that those kittens can go into foster care, be socialized and adopted into homes, or other rescue groups can do that as well. So when it was brought up to me, I've been trying for years to have some kind of municipal program where, where residents would have this option because I don't like telling people that care. I fed this cat the whole summer. What's going to happen to it? I don't want it to be cold. You know, I want it to be taken care of. And again, we can give people education about how to set up an outdoor home for that animal for the cold weather. Um, and I think there's some uh, rules about when water can be out and food could be out which is important if you just leave food out 24-7, all the coyotes, all the other animals are gonna come feast, and we don't want that. These are not gonna help with any rat abatement at all. Rats are predators as well, so, um, and plus, 
when they get poisoned than the animals that eat them get poisoned. Cats don't usually, they'll eat mice, no problem, and chipmunks, but not rats usually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Karen, I have a question, yeah, Mr. Karen, Chair, if you don't mind. Um, when we had this discussion, and I just want to point out to the committee as well, um, there's a twofold with this. I believe that we need a framework within the city because there are current colonies that many residents feed cats. We have, as Karen stated, people who let their cats out, and once they're out, they're indoor, outdoor cats. And we have a tremendous amount of people that do take up the resources, even with our police <coughs> department, that say, hey, I found this dog. They even found this cat. Um, so with this being said, there's a particular framework. I think it would help um, contain the amount of cats that we have, get the, the kittens adopted out, give those foster uh, cat programs uh, framework to work within so that we're not having abundance of cats in a yard. Uh, we have some oversight with that then, and this just builds a framework to all of it. And if I may add, when I, when I reached out to Karen, uh, one of the reasons I did is because the constituents in uh, District 3 in Rainbow Gardens contacted me, and I found out that we're one of the few municipalities that actually don't have the TNR. So how many may... No, no? most municipalities, like City of Milwaukee is adamantly against it okay. ever since that pilot program because it was such a disaster. But again, they didn't have good guidance. Gotcha. They encouraged the, uh, the, colonies, the colonies, and those never work. It, the only time a colony works is if it's a, a contained colony. Like, they'll be like, well, this island off Japan, mm -hmm. that works because people aren't adding more cats to it. If they're not isolated, people will add more cats to it. But most municipalities don't, but they have, like Franklin, the police department has their own feral colony. Mm -hmm. <laughs> off the record. Um, you know, yeah, we shut the cameras shut the off. Cameras yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you know, it's again, people love animals and they want to take care of them, and they don't realize necessarily that leaving food out all the time and, and resources and not like, again, the key is sterilizing the animals. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not going to prevent people from putting cats outside, it's not going to make all the outdoor cats disappear but it is going to end problem behaviors and the behaviors that you do get complaints about. And it gives people an option for that cat that they genuinely care about, that they took care of, that now, oh my goodness, it's getting cold, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So they bring it in and then we have to give them some very bad news and you know, it's not, you can't make a feral, like an adult feral cat is not tameable. It's like p living with a raccoon. Mm -hmm. It'll eat from you, but if you try to pick it up and give it a hug, it's going to bite you. And um, most people don't want that, and I don't blame them, but that cat's never been indoors. So if we give it the resources to survive comfortably outside, and again, rabies vaccines would be given with these cats. That's the real. Dogs are not a vector of rabies in the United States. They haven't been for like 40 years. Cats are still a vector. So... That is important. If someone gets bitten by a dog, I'm like, mm, I wouldn't. Be, I was like, I don't think you need to get a rabies unless your doctor really, you know, if we were in India and someone a dog bit you there. But here, if a cat bites you, you absolutely have to get the prophylactic treatment. So again, it's important to know those cats. They'd be have an ear notch for the most part, so you'd be able to see from a distance. Oh, good, I got bitten by that cat. It probably has rabies. So, and, it's, and they'll have a microchip, so we'll know where they belong if they ever show up at Maddox. So you cover the costs of the microchipping, the spay and neutering, all of that. There is no cost to well, there's, the there's a, there's a small cost to the citizens because okay. they can adopt from us, mm -hmm. but it's not, you know, no one's making a profit. And they don't have to go through Maddox. Again, a stray animal is one that strayed from a home. Mm -hmm. Whereas feral cats didn't have a home to stray from. Most were born on somebody's property. They know they don't belong anywhere. So that essentially, like the way most ordinances are written, if you harbor an animal on your property for so many days, that's your animal. So what is your part in this, basically? Uh, uh, we have my part a is lot here of just to add cats in our neighborhood. A lot of cats. Mm -hmm. They just don't stay in one area. They, they do travel. 
No, cats throughout don't. the whole neighborhood. Well, yeah, they'll stay, but in an, in a confined area, cats have a territory. They don't they have go a territory, from territory, right? Yes, but However, they don't go from like okay. you know. So city what to is city. your part in this? Are you going to catch the cat? No, because they're very hard to catch. So it's up to the homeowner. Well, is it, yes, the if property you don't, owner to bring the cat into yeah. you to be mm -hmm. neutered. Yeah, people do it all the time. If, really? if you're talking about there, there's a problem, like someone has because a colony. These cats are these, very skittish, and, and well, um, that's the whole thing. You have to stop feeding them for like a day, right. and then well, put the food in the trap. And I, they, I can <clears> think of one household that feeds the cats. It's a large area, and they hole up there. They do hole up there. Oh yeah. Because she feeds them. Mm hmm Um. However, they then they wander the neighborhood. They wander all over the neighborhood. Because they're not sterilized, likely, right. and they're looking for I love. I mean, they come by that bird feeder <laughs> all the time and sit and keep watch for the birds. <laughs> if you ever have a problem right. with a large number of cats, that's something we do need to get involved in because we can work with the with the person who owns the home okay. and get all those animals. So again, you can always call Madak and ask to talk to me, and we will send you know we'll go out there, talk to the person, explain why we're there. We'll help them get the cats sterilized. We work with people like that uh -huh. all the time. Well, at one time, West Dallas did catch, they tried to catch the cats from this area, but obviously they missed a few <laughs> because, like I say, they run off. But I questioned one cat per territory, one cat per person or household. Right, well, uh, because there's more than one cat. Yeah, but again, so we don't what, want to encourage people. That doesn't really people. help the, the homeowner that much. They got to catch the cats if they can, and there's only one cat, and that means there's ten other ones in the in the territory. Right, but we can work with again if there's people that have been feeding cats for a long time. We do try to find placement for those cats in other counties on farms and barn programs, mm -hmm. so they have the one cat without the fear of those other ones being euthanized. It's up to the homeowner. But again, catch the cat and bring it into Matt. We are happy to help. Oh, is Matta? Matta? Matta. And yeah, we're happy it? to help people. We're just right down the street on Burnham. Burnham Street. Yeah. Okay. That's the one. Some people, you know, we have elderly and disabled people that I don't anticipate are going to be out there, you know, trapping cats. And we are always happy to help people. But for the most part, people do this all the time. Yeah. So I don't and there's know groups right. that do it off, you know, the radar well, because the it's program not permitted. itself is commendable. However, I don't think it's going to be the cure all because it's not. So many cats. No one's saying it is. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. It'll we help don't want the person. Uh, Ken, she got a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was just gonna kind of comment on that. The point is not really this isn't going to fix the situation. It's to more so lay the framework, especially for those that are feeding twenty cats in their backyard, putting a bowl of food out that the raccoons are eating, the cats are eating, the rats are eating. So in the ordinance, it states that you can give them water during this time and this time while, they're pr 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 while you're present. You can feed them during this time while you're there, and hopefully it can stop some of the homeowners that are choosing to leave a big trough of food out for a colony. And that's what lays the framework here for us to be able to actually act on that and, and when we get a complaint so for someone to stop by and say okay hey you can't be doing that this is the ordinance you got one if you have a problem then we can engage Maddock and say hey there's clearly a colony here there's you know the person is elder they can't trap them what can we do so it's more so not to resolve the whole issue it's for us to be able to start the structure of being able to say okay we, you can do this, but you can't be doing that. Um, so that's kind of more so what this resolution. And to create a partnership yeah. with MEDAC. And, and if I may add, just this was something that really surprised me in our conversation. How many kittens can a female cat give birth to in a year cycle? Yeah. I mean, it's depending. It was it, amazing to me. Yeah, it's like. You like can, rabbits. They can have 63 to 100 <laughs> kittens a year. They literally can get pregnant while nursing a litter. They're breeding machines, and they're very successful. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so not with the breeding, but with the right. surviving, post-breeding. But, post but sterilizing them, yeah. you think about that longevity of, okay, we, we can actually sterilize these cats. 
but you're not going to catch them all. <laughs> well, no, no, that isn't the point. No, no yeah, me. but <laughs> you're yowling. I, I heard you yeah, say that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, Kayla, you got something to say? I just want to make sure it's clear of the process that's laid out in the ordinance. So a person could uh, capture an abandoned or stray cat in their property, bring it to Matic. Uh, Matic would then perform all the necessary neuter spay, rabies, and any other um, work that needs to be done to make the cat um, ready to go. And then that same person would come by, pay for the uh, bill that was uh, generated, take custody of the cat for a brief moment, release the cat back uh, on the same parcel. If they're allowed to, there's one cat on that parcel. And then as uh, person Keen said, um, you can feed and give the cats water, but you have to be actively observing them. You can take that water or food away when you're no longer there. Can a person be cited for feeding cats? Uh, if this ordinance would pass, you would not be cited if you, if it's the cat that you release that you are feeding during daylight hours while you're actively watching the cat. However, if you leave food out overnight, that'd be a violation. If you leave food out during the day and walk away, that's a violation. Mm -hmm. If you're feeding a colony of cats, that's a violation. So you have to make sure you follow the rules by selecting the cat, making sure that that's the one you're feeding and you're observing, and you're taking the food or water away when the cat's not consume anymore. Thank you. I wish Any? you were in place back when I was in Green Bay. The kitty is sure. Okay. Right. Yes. <laughs> Did I hear you correctly, Kayla? You said when they come down to pick up their cat and pay for it? Yes. Did so, I, so, so well, they are paying for it or? If, if you bring, now again, you have choices. You don't have to bring it to Maddock. If you've been feeding a cat since it was born and you can get into your own vet or Wisconsin Humane Society, we all do the same thing. It's a, we do the spay neuter microchip fully vaccinate the cat before it leaves so all of us do that but so they'd have that option no matter which uh, organization or private vet they decide to use so nobody does that for free mm -hmm. and in theory somehow we will be paying something into this because no well is it Matic based on usage where Milwaukee pays the most river hills pays the least it's per per animal these aren't pay. animals that we're taking in this is clinic animals so they don't they're not counted against okay. your use I did not know that. Mm -hmm. and karen i have a question do you mm -hmm. have hardship rates for people for example so if somebody came in yes and had we a, have friends in okay. that would cover for okay. people and we Thank do you. that now for people even just their stray fees right okay I appreciate the work you do, uh, and I thank, thank you. you for, yeah, yeah, I would for like offering to ask this you Before we closing on this or vote on it, do, uh, do you have an estimate uh, what what's the stray cats we have in in our community, or just uh, you don't? Of course, it's, it's hard. well. I know we get in about six thousand a year, which is the whole county. But yeah, there's yeah. like again, there's many many out there, and again, when communities make it acceptable people don't hide them anymore. So we'd get a better count and get a better handle on what's out there. But now, you know, th we will literally go to a, a, a hoarding house. I don't remember if it was West Dallas or Greenfield. Oh, it was, it was Greenfield because I was dealing with Darren. And there was this nice old lady and she's like, I'm not feeding cats. And then like the, the police officer drove around the block and came back and she was like under her car with a paper plate feeding cats. <laughs> but I mean, people don't want to say stuff because they're worried about the animals. Yeah. And they don't want to do anything that's going to potentially, you know, th they have a relationship with the animal, even though it's not like a pet, they care about its outcome. So they never want to admit that they, they're they doing this, you know, but if, if it's okay to do it, they won't feel judged and they'll feel like I could ask for help and not a million bad things are gonna to happen to me. Yes, thank you again. Now we have any Further questions uh, from the committee members? So then we can move on on the motion. I make a motion to approve. Second. Yes. So in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The aye have it. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you for so having much. me. Thank for you. explaining it. Thank you. All right. 
Now we go to uh, yeah, we'll item, gonna item 30. Item 30, yeah. So we have a 2022-0602 Class B Tavern Seasonal Temporary Premise Extension of Temporary Public Impediments Premise Premise Request for D Bags Wrestling Taco DBA Wrestling Taco 1606 South 84th Street from May 28, 22 to November 1st, 2022. Welcome back. Thank you. Oh, you're here. I'm okay. here. <laughs> okay, good. So this is first time for you to, uh, or you were Well, we had, we had two wrestling events last summer that yes, we just did. did a one-day permit for. Yes. Um, so is this for the wrestling and the patio? Well, it should be together, for, or, right. it's for both, right? For right. the yeah. alcohol and for the entertainment. Okay. Yeah. So we're we're we'd like to have one wrestling event per month, and then we would also like to do a little patio uh, where we can serve beverages. Okay. So you know the uh, rules, right? I mean. Right. What we were talking about, your the other person. Yeah. yeah. So our plan is uh, because the the parking lot is a little bit sloped, anyways. We would want to build. Uh, a concrete slab to even it out and bring it up even with the sidewalk there and then do um, con decorative concrete bricks to make a fence around it like a half half wall kind of a thing Good. that'll so be that front area right yep. by lap lap yeah, correct lap, yeah. Okay. yeah right by the by our door we only have the one door mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so any questions from other committee members move to approve I second. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Oh. Quick question. Go ahead, go ahead. When you said a patio, are you like talking about like what, what they did with parklets type of thing on the, the, the area around, because I was looking at the map that you drew up, the diagram. It just looks like there's tables around the outside of the building. That's what you're looking at? Oh, I had two diagrams because I wasn't sure. I, I was kind of giving out two options that if you didn't want us to do it in the parking lot, then we would instead just do it on the sidewalk next to the building. I had kind of like two plans drawn up. Um, plan A and B, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good to have a plan B. Uh, so any motion? We got, oh. okay. Any more questions? So we have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion? Mr. Chair, just before the vote's passed, because there's no clarification on which option. That's oh, okay. Fine. Okay. That's I was going to ask. Liberal option, meaning a yes. broader premises, unless the motion yes. is to restrict that to the, the more restrictive premises. So just a heads up on that. Yes. So, um, so based on that. With that being yes. said, the option to have it in the parking lot as long as it is fenced in, fenced in area or at least, you know, monitored. Because with those events, I've attended them. Great family fun. There's a lot of kids and a lot of movement in that parking lot. So I would be worried about safety and also access to the alcoholic beverages. If you went with your first plan, if we had not approved the other and just had the, the patios, I think you're very limited in your space. Uh, so I would approve to have that in the parking lot. Yeah, yeah, uh, right, I didn't even think about that. Just on the sidewalk, that's not fenced off then, yeah. No. Exactly, yeah. so right. that those would be the stipulations. Is there a specific way I need to state that? No, you can just simply say approving the parking lot version. Parking lot version, okay. okay. Well, I make a motion, or you made the motion, and oh, yes. mm -hmm. and I will second whatever you make. <laughs> yes. Okay. So it'll be option Basically, B. Basically, the location would be in the parking lot with a fenced in area. Yeah. Okay, and I no, second no, that. Sure, no. Normally, how many people do you generally have show up? Um, well, for the patio, we ha we don't have one yet, but we're thinking like 20 people in there. Oh, I see. So okay. It's a small section. Yeah. Um, it'll be a nice option. Yeah, yeah, right. So on the motion, I have approved and second. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? The aye have it. Thank you for coming. So. And for the wrestling, one of our dates changed. Uh, the June date. You can send us an email. Okay. Okay. okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, then we move on to item 3-1, 2022-0613. Class B Tavern, CISO Temporary Permit, Premises Extension of Temporary Public Entertainment Permits, Permit Request for 
Yek Bar, LLC, DBA, Yek Bar, 7408 Walker Street from May 38th to September 2022, temporary 228. He's here from, uh, yeah, come Hi. forward. Hi, guys, how are you? Are you, are you the uh, new operator from Yek Bar? I am. Yeah, I'm Melanie Kukas. Okay. Do you, uh, do you experience any uh, concern with the neighbors or? Uh, well, I didn't, some? but Tracy has. Um, yes. The last couple Please. of, yes, which is crazy, um, understandable. Um, it was guzzlers beforehand, and we have a fenced in area that, um, be my understanding was that it was a permanent um, extension of premise. Um, I talked to Eric Millard, the previous owner, and I've talked to Gina the city clerk um, a couple of times in the un my understanding and what that was that it was a permanent extension of premise in that Frenston area come to find out it wasn't um, that the extension of premise actually changes with the owners but I wasn't under that impression and my mistake and my under misunderstanding of it was that you know otherwise it would have been done prior to even moving forward with anything the issue has been that we have um, my understanding was that we could put anything within inside the fenced in area for the extension of promise um, as long as it was in the fenced in area. Um, and recently I had purchased a beer garden that was um, prior to that in the village of um, Sussex, um, or it was Sussex Slinger and Brookfield at some point during the pandemic. Um, so there is an outdoor beer trailer that's out there that's been decorated with the German decor to be able to serve them, make it a more authentic beer garden with matching picnic tables, umbrellas, things like that um, to bring more people in. Because of the misunderstanding with everything, I just happily brought this trailer in thinking nothing of it and you know was ready to send out, you know, get the yard pretty. I've been painting, I have it in my hair, it's not gray. Um, <laughs> I've been painting all day, I'm sunburnt the whole shebang. Um, to make that area prettier and make it more of an inviting thing since I am in a neighborhood um, and not on a main street. And unfortunately, without turning any lights on, without doing any electricity, without doing any music or anything out there so far, we've had three complaints from to Tracy um, about it because people were, I, my understanding is because they were concerned possibly about sound. Um, um, noise, um, one person actually wrote it and sent an email and sent it to everybody on the council about those slurs being shot at your bar. Racial slurs, that's yeah. the first I've ever been heard. And um, so they were turned off by it, and so that's why they complained hmm. and wanted to say, well, their, their statement was, they don't feel like the patrons are respectful of the neighborhood. Which is, to, can I say in defense? Yeah. Um, in my defense to that is there's a huge diversity of people that come into my bar and that have been coming to my bar of all different ethnicities. We have um, African American, we have Mexican, we have um, everything under the sun. Um, I feel that my clientele since I've taken over um, has actually gotten better and have got improved um, over there because I don't, it's not your typical corner sports bar anymore. It's a German, you know, like where there's German music, there's quality beer, there's, you know, music, there's those things inside where it's, I feel like it's improved. Um, nothing has been once brought to my attention. We've not had, you know, interaction with the police. We've not had any altercations with the neighbors. We've not had anything like that. So this is the very first that I've heard of that. Um, I have an African-American bartender. I have, you know, I have um, children. A, my children. I have a Hispanic bartender. Mm -hmm. I have multiple I have a you know my cook is Hispanic um, there's Mr. chair yeah. if I may and I'm sorry for interrupting you yeah um, I spoke with attorney Serwin today um, just asking for background yeah I'm familiar with you opening because I remember when you came in yeah and uh, you took over Eric's place mm -hmm. you hadn't had experience in past I am absolutely understanding with people assuming things but Obviously, you're learning as a new owner. Yeah. Uh, there's lots of rules and regulations. So I Correct. commend you for working diligently right away to yeah. remedy it and uh, coming forward to answer questions. However, when I spoke with uh, Attorney Sterwin, 
the first question I would have is I have with any establishment. Mm -hmm. I haven't personally had a complaint until today, and that was a constituent uh, in second district, yeah. correct? Um, but when I spoke with Attorney Sirwin, there was nothing, as you said, mm -hmm. no police calls that I, I can reference. And if Attorney Decker wouldn't mind, um, could you answer, has there been any specific issues that are reportable since she's taken over the business? Now, there were service calls in years past mm -hmm. uh, when Guzzlers had <clears throat> had it. Could you yeah, but this is from the chief today. Okay. So it's, it's pretty quiet. Okay. I don't believe there are any calls to the police in relation to the operations of the bar. Okay. So that would be one of my biggest concerns. The other things as far as extension of, of use, um, I think some of the neighbors may just not, may, if you haven't even had anything outside, I don't know if it's fair to say, okay, we can't give somebody a shot when there hasn't even been an opportunity to, to see what it would be like. Well, Makes I mean, sense? They were, they were complaining more about the noise that happens after you know, after ten o'clock, mm -hmm. um, people being loud. Um, it's in a residential area, and they said that they appear that the neighborhood appears to be the dumping grounds out of their cars into the curb. With okay, garbage. so litter and other yes. issues. Can I? Yeah, that's a that I'm, I'm, I'm just hearing yeah, what, you, what they're right. saying. No, absolutely, so. and I understand right. that. I feel like. Um, there's been some conflict of interest apparently with me taking over and a place that has been typically their place to hang out and now it's not their place to hang out because the environment's changed a little bit. Um, so Christian who owns Walker Inn, you know, is pleased because now he's getting more business over at Walker Inn because people are deciding not to be, stay at what was Gosler's and going over to his bar. Um, and Christian and I have a great relationship. I work very diligently to make sure that if you walk on my property right now in front of my building, there's not a cigarette butt anywhere. There's not trash. I actually work my bar every day. I'm there every day. I'm cleaning, I'm painting, I'm bartending, I'm cooking, I'm doing whatever. So I make sure um, I'm kind of OCD about that stuff and making sure that I'm a mom of five, I'm used to cleaning up, um, making sure that my outside area, that my, you go look at my dumpster area, my fencing area, there's not trash anywhere. I've been working really hard to get control the rat population by the dumpsters and things like that. Um, cleaning up, cleaning up the basement, cleaning up, you know, like so for the cleanliness part of it, I understand some people's concerns, but I can assure you <laughs> that I work very diligently to make sure that it's not that. Um, as far as the noise concern after 10 o'clock, um, I've talked to the neighbor directly across the street from me. It's the, I would be the south side of um, Walker, um, the blue house that's kind of kitty corner. I've talked to them over there. Um, they've had no complaints or no issues with um, sound. To kitty corner from me is Walker Inn. Across the, like to the um, east side of the building is the yellow house. Um, I think that um, that the, the neighbors in that area bring more issue to that as far as sound and whatnot goes and disturbance goes. So my little bit of anything would not be maybe for me, maybe it's from that area mm -hmm. would be maybe my guess. Um, the house behind me um, with that has actually a lot, um, you know, there's my property and then there's the lot and then the house right there we've had, haven't had haven't had any issues with him at all. Good communication as far as, you know, mowing the lawn and keeping that, you know, that area super quiet. Um, I do have tenants that live upstairs. Um, I know that they have had like a bonfire and stuff like that on the, pro like not in my fenced in area, but behind the building, that maybe that could have been an after hour issue at some point, but that wasn't on my property, so to speak, or the bar patrons but that's the only thing I can really think of. And then the two houses to the west of me, um, the gentleman owned, he shares my garage with me too, and we talk on a regular basis, and he hasn't had any issues with anything either. Yeah, so. if, I, if I may, uh, I, I, I received an email from one of your uh, neighbor. Uh, yeah. It just states the fact that, uh, you know, I've been noises, and when patrons, uh, 
they leave the uh, premises, mm -hmm. uh, your, your establishment. So, uh, and to me, I think it costs, and then the, the foul words, you know, the verbiage that they're using, you know, uh, it kind of uh, get people upset, you know. That's, to me, that's part of the biggest uh, problem at this point Neighbors complain about it, you know. So, foul language, right? You yes. say, and so, so I wonder if you could, uh, as a courtesy, you know, maybe uh, post something when you leave the uh, establishment. Uh, yeah. Please be very, uh, you know. We are a neighborhood bar. Yeah. And we need to respect and our uh, neighbors. Polite, uh, polite mm -hmm. with the uh, residential people there, you know. Correct. Be quieter, you know, not create a chaos, you know. I think it may be part of the. Uh, the issue based on the assessments of this. Uh, I think probably years. some of the concern probably is too that there's more traffic to that area, so it probably seems louder to some of the neighbors, um, you know, because there's more people coming and going. Um, like I said, the neighbors that are directly in, you know, direct vicinity, like there's not really right. much of anything, they haven't been. I've had communication with them and I've had whatever, they haven't had any issues with it. They're like, hey, we bought a house and we're renting a house in a neighborhood that has a bar. We knew what we were getting into. Um, but I think that there's just more traffic in that area. But I will definitely put up a sign. I'll definitely talk to my bartenders. I'll definitely. Yeah, I would like to ask you, uh, excuse me if I. No, go ahead. The trailer, uh, what's the purpose for you to have the trailer parked there? So when. When I originally took over the bar, I wanted to, the reason why I wanted to make it a German bar in general um, was because of that outdoor fence and area. I think by adding, I could have just a fence and area and have the white and blue picnic tables or put up the umbrellas, I could do that. Um, I think that the, being able to serve beer outside, um, which Eric was able to do when it was Guzzler's, um, just looks more inviting, it looks more, um, you know, at, like you add to the community, a place for people to go, a place, uh, you know, and it's not a huge area, but I think that it brings that atmosphere, the authenticity of it being a German corner bar versus it being, you know, just a German corner bar, if that makes sense. So it is, there's not going to be food being served out of it, you know, there can't be glass, obviously, there can't be those things, but be, it, it gives me also, I have four tap lines in there, so it gives me an opportunity to offer more quality German beer and more of a variety. So I can have my eight tap lines inside that have Hofbrau or, you know, Weinstefan or whatever different types of beers I have, but now it gives me another opportunity to offer four more um, tap lines out there. So more of an attraction to the bar and obviously a plate. Who doesn't like a beer garden? Thank you. <laughs> Any further questions? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Go ahead. Um, so speaking of that space, mm -hmm. You're looking to have music? Yes. Live bands? Yes, but my bands, I don't necessarily, I have a small space and I am respectful that it is in a neighborhood. Okay. We're a neighborhood corner bar. So what I would like to do is I'd like to have like an acoustic duo or an acoustic solo versus a band versus rap music. I don't want any of like, I was thinking maybe Thursday nights and have like, you know, Kenny Brandt who is out at, you know, um, the von Rothenberg beer student in Germantown. He plays at Esterbrook Beer Garden. He's a really good friend of mine because I used to GM out in Germantown mm -hmm. at the beer okay. stube. Um, he's a single guy. He plays the accordion. Just a real chill, relaxing Thursday night because on Thursday nights, you know, what do people do on Thursday nights? It's not, you know, but to go have a beer, maybe have a brat, have a burger and listen to, you know. And what and, hours are you looking to? Right? Well, I put on the thing, I think, you know, for during the week I think from morning until 10 or whatever just okay. because it gave me the opportunity but option. realistically like on it would not be Monday Tuesday Wednesday or even Friday um, Thursday I would like to have the opportunity to um, have like a, just a you know a, a duo or a, um, a maybe solo. one day a week is what you're looking I would like though on Sunday afternoons not Sunday nights okay. obviously we're in a neighborhood so right. have the authentic German music on Thursday nights say maybe from you know even six to eight or four to you know six or whatever it is mm -hmm. and then on Sunday afternoons from you know maybe 12 to 4 or 11 to 3 so it's not nighttime it's not anything like that um, I would like to entertain the idea on Sundays of maybe doing live music like every other Sunday again with a duo or a solo and then on 
the opposite Sundays, making it more of like, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Aaron Arms. He's a DJ that, not a DJ, when, so don't think like loud music. Right. Think backyard chill, you mm -hmm. know, let's have corn on the cob and a burger and a brat and have a, like a backyard barbecue, like an, we are calling it an Eck barbecue, okay. um, you know, with that. So if that's not possible, but he's, Aaron has um, been a DJ here in West Dallas. Um, he's played at Red, White & Brews. He's played at Bronze. So he knows the rules. He knows the decibels. He knows the, you know, all of that stuff. And he's also a DJ for would, the Milwaukee Would you, Bucks. excuse me, would you be able to uh, come forward with the uh, timing that you mentioned tonight and uh, give it to the uh, clerk office? Yeah, yeah. like on paper or email or, have, you know. Now, later? <laughs> Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's already. No late yeah. evening. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't yeah. sound like. No I don't. I don't want late evening. Okay. Absolutely okay. not. Okay. Good. It sounds okay. like it's. Um, um, you're promoting a beer garden. Right. For yourself, but no entertainment license you haven't taken out. I believe I did. I believe I have it all she as part of her. Yeah. For the music. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. For the music. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, well there, there, um, a couple questions. Yeah. So, the beer trailer and serving alcohol out of that, does that fall under the extension or does that fall under her liquor license, Gail? Well, it, if it's an extension, it's the extension of the single liquor license and anywhere on that premises, she could park the trailer and serve out of it. Okay. Um, second question is the music that you want for the speakers that you got on there that you want to hook up. Those I can, are removable too. Okay. Um, so if it's Eric had two out there on, on the building originally, so those would be shut down, and then I would just use the ones that are on the trailer if that's permitted. Um, and then obviously it would have to be with it, that. It wouldn't be that would be for, say, when when the beer say it, that'd be like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, if that's possible, when nobody serving anything out of the beer garden, but just people sitting back in the beer garden to be able to hear, you know some relaxing music or have the game on or whatever. Because I, I did have one resident who was in, not in favor of it, saying yeah. as a compromise he would be happy if the music was shut off at 9. Absolutely, I could and do he that. Said that would be a, he said he's willing to compromise on that as one of, the, one of the people who was not in favor of it. I could even, you know, do it earlier if he wanted. So That's an hour a, before the actual ordinance. Ordinance, and, yeah, the ordinance yeah. takes place. Yeah, because yeah, it's a yeah. neighbor, you know. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I could do that. If that's okay. So, any motion? Uh, I think we have an motion already, right? Motion? No, there was no motion was made no as motion. of yet. We were just we discussing. Motion. Um, if this motion passes, uh, I would ask you to please be sensitive of the neighbors. Oh, absolutely. But for my city attorney, if there's too many complaints from the neighborhood, um, is it possible to take away this permit? Uh, yes, yeah, so that's the risk that happens when you extend the license premises outdoors is it's your full license. So if anything happens outdoors, it's not just you don't, you don't just lose your outdoor premises, you actually would lose your whole license. So yes, is there anything that would qualify under section 125.12, which could be a disorderly house, which can happen with a lot of noise um, or other activities that uh, occur just off the premises but were originating at the premises. All those things could become evidence against the licensee and result in revocation of their license. So it's very important to uh, follow those rules and, and make sure that your patrons are not causing disturbance. Okay, thank you. Can I ask a question? Yes, go ahead. Is there, so when you get the um, complaint, so to speak, um, or the city, city gets them or, the, you know, whatnot, is there a way that we are, you know, like I can be notified so I can resolve things right away? Well, I or is contact that, you. Yeah, that would I mean, be awesome. I, if they come to me, I can contact you. Yeah, that would be great because I want to be on top of it before it becomes an issue. So when I found out about the three complaints, I'm like, what? I'm like, are you kidding me? Um, just because I didn't know. And so I'm like, I could resolve things easier if I'm aware of them right away. Um, and then, you know, whether it's via email or you call me or whatever, just because obviously. And do you also suggest reaching out to the neighbors? You know, because um, my intent was once we got it all set up, I'm planning on mulching it, I'm planning on, you know, painting and doing all that stuff, was to invite them to come in. Doesn't hurt. Do you, should I have done that before? Like, should I do that now, do you suggest? Do you? 
I'm gonna jump or is that in. just yeah, me? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm jump in. So, however you, it's your business, so it's your call how you want to handle if you want to invite the neighbors in or not. Um, Clearly, I do. But I, I can say from the city side of things is that, you know, as the owner of the, of the business, mm -hmm. you know, it is your responsibility to ensure that you don't cause a nuisance in the neighborhood. Absolutely. So, if you feel the best way to do this, you might have been great. If, if you don't, that's also your choice. So. Perfect. Of course. I just didn't know if there was that. Sure. There's no formal or official thing. <laughs> I think I've actually asked you this. All right. Think about it. Okay. Yes. I would highly recommend reaching out to the neighborhood. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I just was, now that I know everything, I appreciate that. You know, this committee doesn't want to see you in six months or three months back here, you know? Right. I hope you don't let it happen. Though. Well, hopefully it's. <laughs> but like I guess if anything happens uh, within your uh, establishment, it's always nice to call the cops, call the police department. Right. Absolutely. You know, because if you don't, that's worse than call them, you know? Well, there's been, not with the customers or the business part of it, there's been a couple of incidences that I have actually had to immediately, I'm I'm like, you guys, again, I'm learning, and I'm, I'm like, reach out, help me, what do I need to do, and they've been great, so, yeah. um, you know, I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Mr. Uh, Chair? Yes. Um, Tracy, if you'd like to make the motion, I'd be happy to yeah, second I'm, it. I make a motion to pass this as we discussed with the times. Yeah, talk okay. So, so which that. would be Thursdays Six and, to eight. and Sundays? And it's Thursday, they end at 7? Is that what it was? 6 to 8. 6 to 8. 6 yeah. to 8. And Sundays? It's 11 to 4. Yeah. 11 to 4. Yeah. yeah. And was there the compromise being placed in that music during the week at the outdoor will be turned off by, by nine? nine o'clock. Okay. And that's seven days a week. And that's not live music. That's not live right, music. Right, that's just yeah. the out, okay. And yeah. does it have to be stated that the decibels, if there is live music? That's already or, in the requirements. That's part of the requirements. That's what I thought. There is a standard number, yes. Okay. So if you were the standard number, you don't yeah. think Alderman Stefanski. But if, but if you're playing through the, the speakers, I'm sure it's going to be lower than 100 decibels because you're going to be just using it as background noise, right? Right, it's not gonna exactly. Be Alderman Stefanski, if I may suggest, as we have with others that we have approved, um, that this it goes to Labor Day, not beyond. As you are going to have a German establishment, I would be thoughtful to say that Oktoberfest would be something that would be added to it. So if we go and we approve to Labor Day and then act Oktoberfest week for you? That would be perfect. I actually just wrote that down because um, okay. I know I put on the application September 30th, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, Oktoberfest um, traditionally starts September 17th and it ends October 3rd. Okay. Um, so if we can extend it to that and... I would be fine with October 3rd. Would you be yeah, fine? I'd be fine with that. Okay. Would that be okay? Perfect. So any further questions? We need a motion. Uh, Jason made the motion. I will second it. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? The aye have it. And thank you so thank much you for, thank you for guys. explaining everything. everything. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. it. I, uh, After we're done with this, I can tell you the words that were said. That would be perfect. Okay. I All right, let's move on <laughs> item 32. Get on top of it, right? So item 32 is 2022-0604, 20, Class B Tavern Seasonal Temporary Permits Extension and Temporary Public Entertainment Permits Permit and Request for uh, Dub Gangers, uh, Angers at uh, Incorporation, DBA, Dub Bar and Grill, 1753 South 68th Street from May 18, 2022 to November 1st, 2022. She's here. She just stepped out, so oh, she's, she's going to be running in. She might have had to leave. She had a call and she said I might not be able to stay. Can you let her know? Okay. If that's the case, are we going to hold? Okay. Oh. She's been before. I mean, uh, well, let's see. So two weekends in June? Yeah. yeah. June 20th. At the time, Steve, of uh, Cease the Music. And she gave the hours of operation. She has 11 to 11 on the mm -hmm. application. 
Mm -hmm. Well, we'd have to amend it to 10. So. Yeah, that's all. We're going to amend it. That's all. Mr. Chair, the, the, 10 to, the 10 o'clock limitation is the standard. The council can, on an individual basis, grant time beyond 10 o'clock, but um, it would have to be a specific motion to allow that. And these are for two, four weekends? Or please review that. I'm sorry. Two weekends. Two weekends. Only, it says only have two plans so far. So she's asking for the whole time. Oh. She only has two plans. Obviously, up to the committee if you want to limit it to those two days or have more product. Or do we want to put this on hold until she can be back here next meeting? What are her is first it, days? When is the first? It's not until June 25th, so we'll have at least, there'll be one meeting. Oh, we still have okay. one. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll make a motion to hold it. Make a motion to hold it. Second. Second. Let's hold it. All in favor? Any motion? Yep. There was a motion and, and a second. second. So I'll wait for you. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed the aye have it. Yeah, let's talk to Alderman Road. I mean, it's, it's important. So anyway, we're going to. Mm-hmm. Not even my committee. Are you kidding? Did you order it or what? But anyway, Moving let's on. move on. 30, 33, uh, 2022, 06, 06, new class A liquor and beer license, County Beer and Liquor uh, Incorporation, DBA, County Beer Liquor, 979 South 60th, West Dallas, Wisconsin, 53214, Agent Jemison Singh. Is Hello. here? Oh, yeah. okay. Hi there. Just me. Are you guys are just uh, new guys? Uh, yeah, new owner, yes. New guys, eh? So you know the rules and regulations uh, of this? Yes. Running a I mean, a uh, liquor store? Yeah. Yes, you sir. guys have other liquor stores? No, uh, we don't. No, not yet. We don't. But we, I had experience. Yeah. Okay. Any question from the committee members? Do Can you have any other liquor stores in West Allen? No. no. I don't have this. This is the first one for us. I see. Yeah, no. I've never been any problem. I place even you know, different uh, license holders, and I've always been. This is a previously, uh, uh, it was a liquor store? It's yeah, it's been a liquor store for a long time. It's a liquor yeah. store, okay. Long time. That's Probably 30 years at least. It's a long time. All right. Yeah, been a long time. Okay. Any question from the committee members? <clears throat> nope, it's your district. Well, I need a motion. I'll make the motion. You're going to make the motion? To approve. Second. All in favor of the motion to approve aye. it? Aye. Aye. Opposed, the aye have it. Thank you. See, you wait too long for just a few minutes. <laughs> but anyway, now we have uh, to uh, place on file uh, item 34, 2022. Move to place on file. Second. All in favor Mr. Chair. to place on file? Oh, go ahead. No, we'll vote on it. Yeah. Aye. 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 Okay, oppose? When you, yeah, go ahead. Okay, when you want to know who to bring in, can we do that now? Or should I just contact I all believe, the um, Yeah, whatever. Okay, I'll call him then. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. So all in favor of the motion? Aye. Uh, opposed? The aye. I have it. Then I believe uh, are we want to talk about tonight. Same I same thing know. on this from same last thing. meeting or last committee. Motion placed on hold. Yeah. yeah motion to Second. All in favor of the motion to place aye. on file? Aye. aye. Motion to adjourn. Uh, Oppose? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, sorry. The motion was to postpone to the next meeting. Postpone yeah. to the right. next meeting. Okay. Sorry. All right. It's not necessarily the next meeting. It's just okay. You want to postpone okay. it. Motion right? to postpone. To postpone it. Right. All right. So we uh, motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor of the aye. adjourn. Aye. aye. Opposed. The aye. Ellen. Thank you. I think we got advisory now. All mm -hmm. right. Advisory come to order. Uh, let the minutes reflect that all members are present. Number 36, ordinance to assign readjusted wards to aldermatic districts. Out of courtesy to our city attorney, I would ask him to explain a little bit. Sure, Madam Chair, this is an ordinance that readjusts the ward number assignments since we had to redivide everything. Uh, some aldermatic districts ended up with only four wards, others with seven. So this just ensures that the ward numbers are assigned to the proper automatic districts. There are no changes in the border um, as a result of this. Madam Chair. Yes. So this is all, all based Stefanski. on what we did last meeting, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Right. Motion to approve. 
Second. Been moved oh, and seconded. Any more discussion? Uh, basically, uh, all the constituents basically will be let known what what district they are in. What so, board they're in? Because some of this will change. So this should be the final act of the council related to the 2020 census, um, and it, what it, all it does is simply take the numbers that were recently assigned and make sure that they're attributed to the correct aldermanic district. Uh, no constituent will see a different older person from what the council approved back in 2021 as far as the automatic district boundaries are concerned mm -hmm. The clerk's office sometimes um, contacts me regarding uh, a district that basically has Changed to the fifth district and I'm wondering is the clerk uh, Are the clerks aware that we we basically aren't the aldermen of that district yet? Correct Okay. Yes, we're aware of that. All right. <laughs> but I've had three calls. That's what I was okay. wondering. People still might want to contact you. Mr. Chip, yes. No. But we that. technically are the alderman of the new district. This is our gray area because we're technically responsible for the old district as well. Mr. So, Madam Chair? Yes. <laughs> it is very complicated right now because every 20 years the city faces this, but it's only every 20 years in which there's a two-year gap between the census and redistricting and the next automatic term. During that two-year gap, you technically represent the constituents who elected you, like in this case, in 2020. Right. Those the are your ones. constituents right Correct. now. As of 2024, you're going to get entirely new constituents. It is your choice as an older person if you wish to respond to only your old constituents, only your new constituents, or both. So is is your call as older persons as to how you'd like to respond? Any other questions of Kale? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. We're on to 37, the appointment of Brandon Reinke, alternate to the plan commission with a three-year term to expire May 17th, 2025. No relation, by the way. Well, I was that's going what I was going to, to say. That. I was going to ask. Any, any conflict of interest there, uh, Rosalie? Conflict of interest. <laughs> that's the first thing I thought when I looked that's at the application. Thought, really? So, um, a motion. Motion was already made. Yeah, on I made second. a motion to approve. Moved and seconded. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Number thirty-eight, appointment of Jessica Katzenmeyer to the Plan Commission. Who is, who is she, really? I don't well, know. Well, see, <laughs> Jessica, would you like her to, to scan? Yes. Uh, Alderwoman Ranke, if I may, uh, just thank Jessica for stepping up in our community. Uh, you've been an asset to the, the committee uh, or the commission, and I congratulate you on what hopefully will be a unanimous supporting vote yes for you so thank you, thank you again so and with that being said i'll make a motion for approval second i'll second it it's been my pleasure second. Second. thank you any more discussion yeah. about jessica Madam Chair, who's stepping down who's not being renewed uh i believe it's amanda nowak from yeah, what i've heard want to be oh okay Thank you. And with that being said, I'd also like to um, thank Amanda for her volunteer work with the commission. Very good. Okay. All those in favor of Jessica? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Carried. Motion to adjourn. I second it. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good job, Madam Chair. Boy, you just ran the ball.
a very slow roll call. <laughs> slow roll. Defense. <laughs> Stacy, call him Stacy. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to send Kale into the. Oh, Tracy's. Oh, he's just absent. Right oh, okay. Now. After yeah, Stacy Stefanowski. Stacy Stefanowski. Call him Ben. Where's Stacy? Sorry, that was dramatic. <laughs> Elder person Ranky here wrote here. Stefanski here. <clears throat> Tenorio. Huh. Excuse. Vitali. Here. Weigel. Here. Grisham. Here. Haas. Here. Keen. Here. Lysak. Here. Nine present, one excused. We have a quorum. Uh, we will begin with the report from the Administration and Finance Committee, which I will ask the clerk to read out. The Administration and Finance Committee approved item number 18. Mayor Devine, I move for approval of the committee report. Thank you, Alderman Haas. Is there any discussion? All right. Hearing none, um, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Elder Person Reinke. Aye. Rote. Aye. Stefanski. Aye. Vitale. Aye. Weigel. Aye. Grisham. Aye. Haas. Aye. Keen. Aye. Lysak. Aye. Nine in favor, zero opposed, one excused. Motion carries. Next up, we'll have the report from the Public Works Committee. The Public Works Committee recommended adoption of items 20 through 23. I move in accordance of the committee report, Mayor Devine. Thank you, Alderman Rote. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Elder Person Reinke. Aye. Rote. Aye. Stefanski. Aye. Vitale. Aye. Weigel. Aye. Grisham. Aye. Haas. Aye. Keen. Aye. Lysak. Aye. Nine in favor, zero opposed, one excused. Motion carries. <clears throat> Next up is uh, Safety and Development. The Safety and Development Committee recommended adoption as amended of item number 25. Mayor Devine, I move for approval of the committee report. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Any discussion on item 25? Hearing none, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Elder Person Reinke. Aye. Rote. Aye. Stefanski. Aye. Vitale. Aye. Weigel. Aye. Grisham. Aye. Haas. Aye. Keen. Aye. Lysak. Aye. Nine in favor, zero opposed, one excused. Motion carries. Next up is License and Health Committee. The License and Health Committee recommended passage of item 27, granting items 28, 29, 30, 31, and uh, 33, and placing on file item 34. Mr. Mayor, I move for approval uh, of those items based on the uh, License and Health Committee uh, report. Thank you. Is there any discussion on License and Health? Okay. Uh, hearing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Elder Person Reinke. Aye. Rote. Aye. Stefanski. Aye. Vitale. Aye. Weigel. Aye. Grisham. Aye. Haas. Aye. Keen. Aye. Lysak. Aye. Nine in favor, zero opposed, one excused. <coughs> Motion carries. And then uh, next up is the advisory committee. The advisory committee recommended adoption of item 36 and approval of items 37 and 38. Mayor Devine, I move for approval of the committee report. Thank you. Any discussion on advisory? Just one, one question, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Alderman Vitale. I, I feel this appointment of Brent and Rank here. I wonder if it's related to older person ranking. You know, it's a little bit of conflict of interest, you think? <laughs> no relation. No relation. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I made sure of it in advance. You made yeah. sure of that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other discussion? Hearing none, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. 
Alderperson Ranke. Aye. Brote. Aye. Stefanski. Aye. Vitale. Aye. Weigel. Aye. Grisham. Aye. Haas. Aye. Keen. Aye. Lysak. Aye. Nine in favor, zero opposed, one excused. Motion carries. Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. I move that we adjourn until our next regularly scheduled meeting, Tuesday, June 7th at 7 p.m. Second. There is a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. We are adjourned. <laughs>